Welcome back to the Drinks Adventures podcast. James Atkinson with you, and we continue our travels throughout the world of fine drinks this week with a foray into cider and some of the ancient traditions associated with the annual apple harvest. William Smith & Sons is one of the oldest family businesses in Tasmania's Huon Valley. Founder Willie Smith planted the first tree in their apple orchard in 1888, and fourth generation family member Andrew Smith is the current orchardist, responsible for taking the farm organic in the late 90s. And in 2011, drinks marketer Sam Reed partnered with Smithy to launch Willie Smith Cider, putting apples that are not good enough to sell otherwise to very good use. They've continued to evolve Willie Smiths over the last few years with the introduction of heritage apple varieties to their orchard. Most of the ciders made in Australia that are actually made from real apples, which sadly is about only 15% of the cider is actually made from real apples in Australia, but that's another story, are made using the same varieties of apple that you would find in your local supermarket. And that's the equivalent of making wine from table grapes. There's been a few cider makers that have pioneered the use of proper cider apples in Australia, but arguably it's been Willie Smith that's brought this evolution of cider to the fore, with its multiple wins of best in show at the Australian Cider Awards, most recently in the last few weeks, with the single variety Kingston Black Cider. Willie Smith has also introduced to Australia the ancient ceremony known as was sailing at its Huon Valley Midwinter Festival held annually in July. I went down this year to find out what it's all about. Three cheers for the old apple tree. Hear it? Hear it? Hear it? I'm at a wassailing ceremony at Willie Smith Cider in the Huon Valley, Tasmania. We know that the middle of winter has gone and we know that the sun's coming back. We light the bonfire to show that the sun is coming back. That's the purpose of the bonfire. The sun is returning, the warmth will return and with it life will return. Okay? Now if you're sitting there wondering what on earth wassailing is, you're probably not alone. Bill Bradshaw is one of the UK's leading cider experts. No one really knows the origins, but essentially it's a midwinter celebration that started uh, sometime in the Middle Ages in Northern Europe, but it's quite specific to Britain. No other country's wassail that we know about, not traditionally. It's a very West Country thing. You'll find some up in Herefordshire, some down in Devon and Dorset, and a load of them in here in Somerset. Uh, where I'm from. Uh, It's got quite a strong wassailing tradition because it's quite a strong cider area. Basically, the old established traditions are you give thanks in the orchard. So you do that by mulling some cider and that's sort of a wassail drink that will get passed around. Everyone will take a sip from the cup and then people like to make a lot of noise. So sometimes people bang pots and pans if there's lots of kids there. Some of the guys here in Somerset use shotguns. You you know, fire a couple of volleys into the air and you basically sing a song that gives thanks, you know, for a, for a great season. Hold out, hold dream, we'll thee and hope that thou will bear For the Lord doth know where we shall be to be merry another year For to blow well and to bear well, so merry let us be let everyone drink up and help to the old apple. I'm Sam Reid, co-founder of uh, Willie Smith's Cider Makers. Came across this concept of uh, was sailing while I was travelling around France and the UK on doing a bit of cider research. It just seemed to be a really nice parallel with what we were trying to do with the valley as well. Not only wake up the apple trees for a good harvest, but, you know, wake up the uh, the valley and say, hey, come on, guys, let's get together as a community. Uh, let's have some fun and, and let's let everybody know that we're still here, you know. What else happens at a wassail in the Northern Hemisphere that you were trying to recreate in Australia? Yeah, well, the wassail is led by a green man who is generally a member of uh, a Morris side they're called the morris of the morris dancers um there are certainly a lovely energetic bunch of people who have a l- nice little bit of anti-establishment message about them obviously it's based in the pagan religion so they tend to worship the seasons they love to have a bit of a good time they love to drink a bit of cider can i just get you to put your hands together for the morris dancers here that's graham hamilton leading the sale for willie smith's dressed as a green man a mythical creature of the woods yeah, I've been with uh, a number of different teams at the moment. I'm with uh, Red Raven Morris here in Melbourne. We dance out throughout the year, um, traditional English folk dancing. 
We do a, a mixture of the styles of Morris that, that are from the Cotswolds uh, in Oxfordshire and also uh, a style that's called Border, which is from the, the counties of England that border Wales, so Herefordshire, Shropshire, Gloucestershire. If you look at where the apple growing traditionally is in England, it's in those counties that border Wales. So it is Her Herefordshire, uh, Somerset, Shropshire, those sort of counties. Um, and that's where the border tradition of Morris dancing is. So you basically got uh, an overlapping of, of the Morris tradition and where the, the cider apple trees are grown. First held in 2014, the Midwinter Festival was a much needed boost to the Huon Valley economy according to Willie Smith's Sam Reed. Pretty much the Hewitt Valley was closed for business for at least August and maybe um, even longer. Some of the wineries, etc., just shut their doors. And so um, in terms of visitor economy, it was just dead. And then I think that kind of led to the whole place just emotionally being kind of a little bit quiet and, and um, not a whole lot going on. So we were really like trying to say the Hewitt Valley is open for business uh, in winter. Matthew Evans, host of TV show Gourmet Farmer, has been a Huon Valley resident for 10 years. He's a stallholder at the Midwinter Festival with his local business, Fat Pig Farm. What's so amazing about that festival was, you know, we all hibernate a little bit, you know, we, we sort of stop work a little bit earlier in the day if you if you work the land and you, know, you, pop, you go inside a bit earlier to get the fire going, you, you drink a little bit more scotch or a little bit more mulled cider or whatever, you know, and, and this festival started and midwinter, mm, muddy, mm, you know, is anyone going to come? And people love it. I mean, we're, we, we're, it's like it's like we were always waiting for this festival to happen. It's the only festival in probably in, in Australia where Morris dancers aren't just you know tolerated; they're actually welcome. It's this beautiful thing. People get you know get into fancy dress, put so much effort in, and it's like we always wanted it, and it's just it's appeared, and it's like it's always been here. William Smith and Sons is one of very few apple growers that has survived in the Huon since the apple industry collapsed due to exposure to the world economy in the 1970s. Everyone in the valleys, grandfather, father, worked in the ind apple industry, whether it was like, you know, driving trucks up to um, Hobart to put the apples on the ships, or whether it was um, actually working in the orchards, or whether it was grading apples. Every family in the Huon has, has a story, deep story, deep connection with the apple industry. And, uh, and yeah, the apple industry's um, declined dramatically since, uh, since the 60s. Um, you know, there were a thousand Apple farms in Tasmania in uh, in 1960. I think there's about 20 left now, 20 or 30 commercial apple farmers left. So that's obviously a massive, massive change. People didn't choose to leave the apple industry. They were forced out of the apple industry. You know, they went bankrupt or mostly went bankrupt. I mean, they just couldn't trade anymore. What you do see from the survivors, I guess, is they ha they have all innovated, changed. They're not doing what they did, you know, th a generation ago. Smithy went organic, you know, in 1999. That uh, was a massive risk at the time. Um, it's paid off well now. Um, but, you know, certainly if he was doing what his dad did, he probably wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be having this conversation. He had to innovate. This was the region that gave Tasmania the name the Apple Isle. This is where all the apples were pretty much exported straight from here, you know, across the river here, from uh, Port Huon to straight to the UK. And, the bottom fell out of that market in the 70s and, and, and the area fell on tough times. And I think part of the reason why I like it here is because people are accustomed to having to make do with what they've got and to not waste things and to use what nature has gifted us. Um, and, and, and nature in this part of the world gifts us a lot. The other elements though, we thought Folk music was, has always been integral to Morris dancing. Obviously, drinking plenty of cider is a pretty important part of it as well. Feasting, you know, there's a lot, going to be lots of great food, and we really like to highlight all the local um, Huon Valley and Southern Tasmanian produce that you can get your hands on. And the other thing, I suppose, which has always been core for us and a real important part was um, storytelling. To hear real stories from real people, I mean, you just, some of the photos I've seen of people just absolutely enraptured by you know, someone talking on stage, just the presence that they have and, and the, just the engagement that they can get from people, it just makes a difference from, uh, you know, TV or all that plugged in entertainment you can get these days and, and just brings people together more closely. My cruelty, and I hope that the Almighty has mercy on my boss. <laughs> Cheers. A few years back, I started 
trying to um, reach out and connect with the uh, local Aboriginal community. We programmed a, an Indigenous night a couple of years ago. We had Indigenous storytelling last year at the festival. And then this year, finally, we had a really amazing and spiritual welcome ceremony. And tonight, I just invite everybody to think about how people have been dancing on this country for a really long time. Because we thought, you know, this is Australian pagan religion. This is about worshipping the ground we're on and, and the land we're on, and we really need to uh, pay homage, I suppose, to, to that tradition, which is Australia's original tradition. Caretaking the well-being of country. So on that note, have a great night, everyone. Take care of each other, and welcome to this country. We think this is likely to be possibly the largest lost sailing ceremony in the world. So this is wonderful. Who knows what the biggest one in the world is and who's going to prove me wrong? <laughs> it's the biggest one I know of. This year at the festival we had 18,000 people there over the course of the weekend. So we were blown away. It was the best festival we've ever had. When you think back to five years ago when we started, Bit like a bit of like a you know let's have a bonfire in the paddock and invite some of our best mates. We ended up getting four and a half thousand people uh, for that one, um, and so the growth's been incredible. I mean, eighteen thousand was twenty percent up on last year, according to cider expert Bill Bradshaw. Willie Smith's claim to have created the largest wassail in the world is on pretty solid ground. 18,000, no way, I've never heard of anything that big. I'm, I'm pretty sure they're probably right. The numbers we're talking about normally be, you know, 50 or 60 people. It, they're normally pretty small, possibly up to sort of 200, something like that, if people really go for it. There's a village in northern Somerset called uh, Carhampton, and I know they've had one sort of consecutively for over 100 years. But, I mean, cider has a kind of a 20 to 30 year up and then a 20 to 30 year down. Um, that's just kind of the way it seems to go in the UK. It nearly died out, actually, wassailing. And I think given the cider revival we've had, a, you know, sort of over the last 20 years, people have become much more aware of it and actually started to invent new traditions and, and make sure they celebrate it. And Graham Hamilton says the midwinter rituals are spreading across Australia. I guess what's happened in the past 30, 40 years is that that there's been a rediscovery of apple wassailing as a ceremony, as part of the English folk tradition, and the Morris dancers have been an integral part of that, that rediscovery and that revitalisation. We've come back to, to Melbourne saying how wonderful it is. Other Morris dancers have heard how great the, the event is. All of a sudden, we've got these little midwinter festivals and apple wassailing ceremonies sprouting all over the country. And it's really quite lovely to see and to think that, that perhaps the, the, the Midwinter Festival in Hewan Valley has, has actually been instrumental in, in quite a rediscovery and resurgence of this tradition here. Now, thank you so much to all the bands who performed at the festival and gave me permission to use their music in this episode. Eight Foot Felix, The Dead Maggies, and Volgograd. Some awesome music there, and I'll include links to their websites in this week's show notes. Congratulations to Cameron, who won last week's prize of a bottle of Penfold's Grandfather Rare Tawny for his iTunes review. He said, the episode on the Penfolds collection was really interesting, especially the stories about the great old fortifieds and the winemaking philosophies behind them. Well, thank you very much, Cameron. You'll be able to ponder that heritage over a lovely glass of grandfather, thanks to Penfolds. Now, there is a prize giveaway once again this week, but a bit different to previous weeks. Willie Smith's has kindly offered a slab of its traditional cider, which is an absolutely ripping cider, to Drinks Adventures listeners. All you have to do is go to the Willie Smith Cider Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash Willie Smith Cider. Like their page if you haven't already and answer a very simple question about this week's episode. So if you're listening to this pretty much as soon as the podcast come out, it's probably going to take about 24 hours for that competition to go live on the Willie Smith Cider Facebook page. 
Congratulations to Jenny Port, who I spoke with on last week's show about Penfolds and was subsequently awarded the Wine Communicators of Australia's 2018 Legend of the Vine Award for Victoria, recognising her massive contribution to the wine industry as a journalist and critic over many years. Look out for some bonus content in the podcast feed over the next few days featuring Sam Reed of Willie Smith's. And you can find all previous shows, show notes, transcripts, and links to lots of related information on the podcast website, drinksadventures.com.au. I'll see you again next week. Thank you.